Hello again, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for EliTheComputerGuy.com and EveryManIT.com. Today's class is Web Proxy Servers for Hacking. So if you've seen any movies that involve hackers or any TV and shows that involve hackers over the past 20 or 30 years, they will almost always have some sequence where they're bouncing signals between different servers all over the world trying to hide their tracks from law enforcement. So you know, they're sitting in their house in like New York and then they bounce a signal to Ukraine and then bounce that signal to Shanghai and then bounce that signal down to Johannesburg and then they attack you know whatever it is they're they're trying to attack bouncing signals or, or bouncing doing that type of thing can be done in numerous different ways one way that you can do that is by using proxy servers so proxy servers allow you to bounce your web traffic between different servers. So if you're trying to go out onto the internet, basically you can route your web traffic from your computer through another server and out to the internet. If somebody tries to track back and figure out where an attack is coming from, they will hit that proxy server and they may not be able to get to you. So this class today is going to be talking about these proxy servers. Now when you're dealing with hacking, you can use uh, web proxies for two reasons. One is just your general hacking. So let's say uh, you're trying to do uh, like spam marketing, so you're trying to leave comments on blogs. Uh, well, if you leave a comment once, uh, if you try to leave, use too many comments coming from the same computer, many times the system will block you. Well, you can use these proxy servers to try to attack the same website from numerous different computers all over the world. So the first reason you can use hacking and web proxies is basically to attack different computers or different systems from different parts of the world. The other reason you can use web proxies is to bypass the security on your local area network if you're trying to get to websites that are blocked by your local uh, administrator. So let's say you are in a business or you are in a school environment. Many times now they will block certain websites. So they'll block Facebook or MySpace or Twitter because if you're in a business, your boss does not want you to be doing social networking while you're at work. You know, they're, they're paying you a paycheck, so they would prefer that you're actually doing your work. Well, they can set up systems, and I've personally set up systems, to block people from going to Facebook or MySpace or Twitter or whatever other website they don't want you to go to. Well, if you use a web proxy, if you know how to use it properly, you can bypass all of that security. So they set up all the security, and then doing a couple of very simple things, uh, you can bypass uh, all the security that they've set up. So those are the two reasons you generally use web proxy servers and hacking. Now back in the day, just so you know, proxy servers really did have a point. If you go back to the days of Windows 95 and Windows 98 dial-up connections, people used to use proxy servers legitimately. So if you had a local area network in your house, and you had an old dial-up modem, you know, a 56K modem, and you wanted to share that modem, you had to set up the computer as a proxy server. So basically, any computer in the house, if it wanted to go out to the internet, it would then connect to your proxy server that you set up. That proxy server would dial out to AOL or to MindSpring or to, to whatever internet service provider there was at the time. And that is a way that you could share your connection, internet connection back in the day. So these did have a very useful purpose. Even now, you may hear of the Squid proxy server. If you know what you are doing, and once you get to a little bit more of an advanced level, proxy servers can be very, very useful for, like I say, higher level system admins. For the general population now, though, almost nobody really uses proxy servers anymore. <laughs> the only reason an average person would use a proxy server is for hacking. So, so this is just something to, to keep in mind as we go in this class. So as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy. This class is Web Proxy Servers for Hacking. If you give me a second, we'll dive into this class. So now I want to give you an overview of what we are doing when we're using web proxy servers for hacking. So as I was talking about in the example, uh, you know, you can bounce 
your internet signal, your internet connection through multiple computers on the internet to try to mask where you are currently located. Uh, you know, you could do this uh, for, for a number of reasons. Now, depending on what the actual attack is you are trying to use, you may use different technologies. So today I'm going to be talking to you about web proxy servers. Web proxy servers are used to attack or to, to interact with websites. So if you're trying to leave spam comments, if you're trying to use anything that involves the World Wide Web, you would use proxy servers to bounce your signal. Uh, if you're trying to do some different type of attack, you would use other systems and other methods. So web proxy servers are only for attacking or interacting with websites or with uh, like web applications, that kind of stuff. Essentially, what happens with this is you have your computer in your house. So you're sitting here in your house, in your computer, and you're going to be doing something naughty for some reason. Well, what you do is in the world, there are numerous proxy servers. So these are all over the world. So if this, let's say this is the country, uh, I'm a horrible drawer, but let's say this is the United States. <laughs> So this is a proxy server up in New York. This is a proxy server in Chicago. Uh, this is a proxy server in Dallas. And this is a proxy server in Mexico City, let's say. So these are different proxy servers. These proxy servers have different IP addresses. And I'll, as I'll show you in the demonstration, they use different port numbers. So this proxy server up in New York, let's say is 233.155.66.4. The one in Chicago is 105.78.96.4. The one in Dallas is 186.34.33.1. And the one in Mexico City is, I don't know, 92.78.64.2. So these are the IP addresses of these individual proxy servers. Now what you would do is when you're at your house, if you're using Windows, you would go into Internet Explorer and change the proxy settings. Again, I'll show you that in the demonstration. But if I wanted to make it seem as if I was browsing the Internet or doing an attack from a New York proxy server within the, uh, the proxy settings in Internet Explorer, I would then put in this IP address. So I'd put in 233.155.66.4. The reason is, is then let's say you have the CNET website over here, CNET.com. So CNET.com has a lot of stuff about computers. Now let's say they, they, they did something to make you angry. So you want to leave a lot of spam comments. You, you want to be really angry at them. Um, but for some reason, you don't want them to be able to track you back to your house. What you would do is you would have your computer then connect to this proxy server up in New York. And then when you go to CNET.com, the traffic would go up to this proxy server in New York. This proxy server in New York would then send it over to the CNET.com over in San Francisco or, or wherever it's at. If there is an administrator sitting at CNET.com seeing you leave all these spam comments or whatever, when he looks at his log file, he's going to see 233.155.66.4. So the administrator, if they decide to do retribution, they decide to block an IP address, etc., they will block this IP address, not yours. So then, if you start leaving a lot of spam comments and they block this IP address, you can then change your proxy server to the Chicago one. And then you can hit CNET.com. And if they block this, then you change it to Dallas. And then you hit CNET.com. And if they change that, then you go to Mexico City. Now, this seems very simple, and this seems very slow. But remember, we are talking about the computerized world. I saw one service that you could pay like $50 a month for that literally every second, it would automatically change the proxy server in your computer. So if you're out there doing a lot of weird, spammy stuff, literally every second, it was changing your, the, uh, the proxy server IP address. So you bounce from here to here to here to here to somewhere else to somewhere else to somewhere else to somewhere else to somewhere else, etc. So this is what the proxy servers do. Again, 
as I'll show you in the demonstration, the people over at whatever website or whatever web property you're attacking, when they look at the log files, they will see the proxy IP address and not yours. That's how all of this uh, basically works. So the first way, the main way when people use proxy servers is to go into their internet connection and actually change this proxy server configuration. You can use web-based proxy servers. What this is, is very, very simple. Again, we'll show you in the demonstration, but if you go to a website such as Proxify.com, it's just a normal website, you go to Proxify.com, you can then put in a website that you want to go to. When you go to that website, that website will then see the IP address information for Proxify.com and not for you. Again, this is a good way to, 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 to do things anonymously. And also, if you use a website like Proxify.com, that will then bypass a lot of the security that your local area networks uh, systems administrator has set up. So if you want to go to Facebook.com and it's blocked, well, first go to Proxify.com, then plug in Facebook.com, and then you will be able uh, to go. So this really is how it works. Now, with all of these things, um, you know, we have the theory. So this is the theory here. And then we have the products that are out in the real world. So depending on how much money you want to spend, uh, gives you how complicated you want to make this mess be. So there are a lot of free proxy servers out there. So you can bounce your signal through the Philippines, through China, through uh, Shanghai, through Africa, etc. for free. And you'll get like one hop. Well, if you're willing to pay more money, anywhere between $30 to $100 a month, they have numerous proxy systems, so your signal can get bounced here to go up, to go up, to go up, to go up. And that's where you get the, these, these huge, where your signal gets bounced all over the internet whenever you're watching these hacker movies or there's hacker TV shows. The one big warning that I'm going to give you if you decide to use proxy servers of any type is to remember your speed is going to slow down tremendously when you go to surf the web. The reason being is when you decide to go to a website. Now normally when you decide to go to a website, your computer connects to the website and the information gets relayed back to you. So that's a pretty quick, or that's about as quick as it's going to be at least. Well now if you're using these proxy servers, your communication goes out to the proxy server. The proxy server, depending on the load level on it, will then get around to sending it to the website you're going to. The website will then return the information back to the proxy server. Then the proxy server, whenever it gets around to it, has to upload that information and send it back down to you. So if this proxy server has a very uh, uh, low internet connection, if it has a low speed internet connection, this whole process can take a long time. So if you're going to be using proxy servers, even if you have cable internet with a 5 megabit per second connection, expect once you start using proxy servers that the speed of your connection is going to go down to about 56k. The reason is, is because you have a lot of weak links or slow links in this proxy environment. You have to connect to the server. So how powerful is a server itself? This proxy server, does it have a Xeon processor? Does it have 50 gigs of RAM? Or is it just some little crappy machine that's sitting in some 14-year-old's basement? The internet connection. Does this have, you know, a dedicated cable internet connection with 100 megabits uh, bits per second up and 50 down? Or is it a DSL connection, you know, with 1.5 down and up? These are the types of things uh, that may cause problems. But basically, this is all there is uh, to proxy servers. And again, you know, with, with the art of it, right? and, you know, this is kind of a theory. The art goes into, you know, you, you kind of figure out, have to figure out what, what you would use it for. So, um, I've shown you this whole mess of an example, uh, the, the theory behind how web proxy servers work. Basically, all you're doing is you're bouncing your internet traffic through a different server on the internet to get to whatever website or web application or whatever it is you're trying to interact with or attack. Again, if you use 
uh, web page proxies or web based proxies, you're going to a website and then that website opens up a frame to wherever you're going to attack or whatever website that you're trying to see. Again, pretty simple all in theory. So with that, I want to go on to the computer now. I'll show you how this actually gets set up. I'll show you a lot of the information that websites can very easily pull from uh, your internet connection when you connect to the website, etc. I think it will make a lot more sense once you actually see all this stuff in action. So with that, let's go on to the computer and, and we'll show you how this works. So here we are sitting at my Windows 7 computer. So it's Windows 7. I'm going to be showing you this today on Internet Explorer just because it is easier. The main thing to remember is whatever default settings you put into Internet Explorer will affect all of the other web browsers that are on your computer. So when you put in the proxy settings for Internet Explorer, that will affect Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, etc. So when you put configurations into Internet Explorer, it affects everything else. So if I try to show you how to do this on Google Chrome, well, then I'd still have to open up Internet Explorer, and then it would just get long and tedious. So I'm only going to show you this on Internet Explorer. So here we are sitting at Google.com. The first website that I'm going to go to is whatismyip.com. Now, what is myip.com shows you your external IP address. So this is the IP address of your cable or DSL modem or your T1 line. This is the IP address to the outside world. So you may have a lot of computers on your internal network, your LAN, they will have whatever IP addresses they have. The only IP address that the outside world cares about though is this external IP address. So this shows you that my IP address currently is 98.233.107.155. This is the IP address that the external world sees. So if you're trying to do spammy stuff where you're trying to leave like spam comments or if you get blocked on a website, the logging software and the security software will use this IP address to try to block you. So it'll see, oops, we've seen this external IP address before, we will block you. If you can somehow get another IP address though, external IP address, it may not block you. The other important thing is if you're doing nefarious activities, if you're being a, a super hacker, what you should realize is that if the law enforcement gets this external IP address, they know what internet companies own particular IP addresses. So 98.233.107.155 is owned by Comcast. So what they will do is they will get a search warrant. They will go to Comcast and they will say, what address does this IP address belong to? So they'll say, we have this IP address. We want to know the street address of the person and who pays the bills. As long as they have a warrant, Comcast will give them the information and then they'll show up at your doorstep with, you know, patrol cars and guns and all kinds of nastiness. So this is how they track you down. It is a two-step process for them. First, they have to, to get the IP address, then they go to the internet service provider, and then they bring in the cop cars and guns and dogs, etc. So if you can change this ex external IP address, um, it might make your life a little bit easier. It pose, puts up a little bit of a smoke screen. Now the first thing that you can do to change this IP address is you can use a website called Proxify.com. So this is a web based proxy server. What this means is you can put in a, a website that you want to go to and it will open up that website within a frame of Proxify.com. So as you can see here, if I go to whatismyip.com, it tells me what my external IP address is. If I go to Proxify and I go to www.whatismyip.com and I hit Proxify, it is then going to show that I'm browsing from this IP address, 172.21.251.136. So basically, if I'm going to some kind of weird website or trying to do something, if somebody tries to track back and see who's doing what, they will get this external IP address 
that does not match my 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 street billing address. So if somebody tries to come back and, and figure out what's happening, um, that that's something you can do to to try to put up a smoke screen so they can't figure out what is going on. The other nice thing with Proxify.com is if your business or if your school blocks certain websites, you can get to those websites using Proxify. So uh, so. You know, I've been paid to set up uh, for companies to block access to Facebook and back when it was popular, MySpace. Uh, these companies, you know, shockingly did not feel that if they're paying their employees, that their employees should be then uh, online doing social networking. They actually thought that their employees should do their job. <clears throat> Shocking. Well, so we would set up blocks to prevent them from going to Facebook or MySpace or Twitter, etc. Well, if they went to Proxify.com, they would be able to then plug in Facebook here, and then they would be able to surf through Facebook and do everything uh, that they would want to do. They could chat with their friends, you know, like pictures, etc. Why? Because if Proxify.com isn't blocked, they can get to Proxify.com, and then, like I say, the websites are being opened up within a window on Proxify.com um, versus them actually going to it with their web browser. So uh, let me show you. So if we went to Proxify.com and we went to, let's say, CNN.com, we have Proxify. See, CNN opens up down here, and the top part is this frame. Again, one of the nice parts with Proxify is, is it has certain extra features you can use. So you can do no cookies, you can do no scripts, you can do no ads, no referrer, text only, etc. So if you want to block some information, you can use that. The other thing is you can actually tell Proxify where you want to be seen as coming from. So Royal Oak, Michigan or Pinellas Park, Florida. If for some reason you wanted to, to say that you were coming from Pinellas Park, Florida, you could click on this and then your IP address would change to that city, that location. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. Uh, you just might want to. It's important to understand how much information that can be received when you go to a website. So this, this website right here is called IPLocationAddress.org. So when you go to a website, there's a bunch of information that that website can pull from you to find out things about you. So IPAddressLocation.org, uh, if we go down here, we can see that it says what my external IP address is, 98.233.107.155. But also, if I scroll all the way down, it will give me a lot of other information. This is my external IP address again. This is my internal IP address again. This is my host name. So it says that I'm with Comcast.net. It says that I'm from the United States. It says that I'm from Owings Mills. Uh, it says my language is English. It says I use Windows 7. And it says I use Internet Explorer. So look at all of this information uh, that is simply given out. Whenever you go to any website, all of this information is just given out for free. If they know how to uh, program a little bit, they can get this information. So they can know this is your external IP address, you're with Comcast, and you're in Owings Mills. So they can track you down uh, very easily. Now, if I take the same information... And I go over to Proxify. You will now see that you can get a bunch of different information. So you, the IP address is 192.168.107.184. Um, which is kind of odd. That really shouldn't work. Uh, host name, it doesn't give you anything. Apo, it says you're... You're in a city called Apo. Your language is English. Your operating system is a Mac, which it obviously isn't. And your, uh, your, your web browser is Safari. So now simply using Proxify, you see all this information has changed. So now they, they, they no longer know where it is that you're coming from. So this is web-based um, proxy service. So basically you go to Proxify.com and then you open up whatever website you want to go to. Now, if you want your web browser 
and your, your system to default to use a different proxy setting. You can actually set that so it automatically uses the proxy server. So if you go to a site like this site, st-proxyswitcher.com, you can get a list of proxy servers that are out in the world that you can use uh, most of the time for free. So it will give you the IP address of the proxy server, the port that you need to use, the type, the country it's located in, the speed, etc. So all this information is out there for you for free. Now, why do people allow you to use their proxy servers for free? <clears throat> Probably not for good reasons. Um, I will warn you that if, if you use any of these proxy servers, the chances are that hackers are probably setting up these proxy servers. So if you send username and passwords you know, through the internet when you're using a proxy server, you're just a complete idiot because all that information is probably getting logged. Remember, you're using this to hack. The tools that you're using are most likely created by hackers. Hackers don't have any problem with hacking other hackers. <laughs> see, see how this works? So if you're going to be using these proxy servers, remember, any information that you're sending could, in fact, be logged and, you know, could be used against you. So uh, what we can do is we can go down and we can figure out what proxy server here we want to use. Once we've decided what proxy server we want to use, we then go up to Tools, Internet Options. We then go to Connections. And then we go down to LAN settings. This is where you find your proxy server information. Now in this box here, you see proxy server. So I'll check the box and it says use a proxy server for your LAN. So in here, I plugged in the proxy server IP address that I want to use. And then the port, if you see down here, you know, port 880 or port 80 or whatever, this, this particular proxy server uses port 3128. So if I hit OK, it will now force Internet Explorer to use this proxy server. So I hit OK, and I hit OK. Now what I do is I can go back to what is my IP dot com and see what the IP address it gives me is. So this is what my IP address was before, 98.233.107.155. We are now bouncing through the proxy server that I set up, and the IP address now will come out as now this may take a minute because remember whenever we do any internet traffic now our request goes to the proxy server the proxy server then goes to the internet the internet then returns the information to the proxy server the proxy server then has to upload the internet to us so this this may take a lot longer so now we see that this is what the outside world sees as our IP address, 22.127.134.70. It also shows that it possibly a proxy server is being used. But the important part is, is if anybody is doing any logging, etc., they will co now come back to this external IP address. If we go over to the IP address location.org website, we can do the refresh. Again, this might take a minute. And then it'll show that we have, or it seems as if we are sitting in a different geographic part of the world. Now, I don't know if I will edit out this lag time just to show you how ungodly painful it can be to use a proxy server. Again, if you're using proxy servers, you should know exactly why you're using the proxy server and you should have everything set up beforehand because you don't want to be surfing the web on this. Because remember, you know, everything is now bouncing through multiple servers. It's going over numerous internet connections, um, etc. So it will be very, very, very slow. So now it shows the external world. My IP address is 22.127.134.70. If I scroll down, this is the external IP address. It still shows my internal IP address. My DNS host, my host name, well, it doesn't say who the provider is, but now it does say my IP location. So now any website would think that I'm coming from the Philippines and the city is Makati. So 
if I go to a website, that website is now thinking I'm coming from Makati in the Philippines. So this is how um, all of this works. Now, if I, I could change my proxy server to, to something else and, you know, it could show up that I was in Ukraine or in Russia, etc. But that's all there is to these proxy servers. If you use a web-based proxy, basically all you're doing is going to a website. Then you're entering in the website you want to go to. And the website you want to go to will open up in a frame and you bypass the security uh, that, that has been set up on your local area network. If you set up this proxy server within an Internet Explorer itself, so you go up here to Internet Settings, Internet Options, Connections, LAN Settings, and then you put the information here, then Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Safari will automatically use this information. Just be very careful using this because, again, most of these systems are set up by hackers. Hackers will steal information from anybody, including other hackers. So, so just be, be careful when using this. But this is really all there is to using these web proxies. So with that, uh, let's go back out to the real world and have some final thoughts. So that's all there is for web proxy servers for hacking. Essentially, all you're using these web proxy servers for is to disguise who you are. So you're sitting in your house, you're sitting wherever you are, and then you can, can connect to these different websites through different servers on the internet. The end website then thinks you're coming from that server you've connected to and not from your house. Now, there is some... Some very serious things I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to warn you about uh, when you do this. Now, the first thing that you have to remember whenever it comes to hacking and whenever it comes to security is if the person you're attacking has unlimited resources, they will be able to track you down and find you no matter what you do. Remember, Everything that you do on the internet gets logged. The issue is, is it's very expensive to try to go through all of those logs to figure out what just happened. So again, when you connect to a website, that website will get some basic information from you. It'll get your IP address, it will get you know probably where you're located in the world, your host name, etc. So if a site you're going against, if you're trying to hack, has a little bit of money, they probably have a script that pulls that information out from all visitors and that gets logged. So that's a little bit of money. Well, if you're going against law enforcement, then remember law enforcement has things like warrants. So they can go to companies and force them to give them information. So let's say you're coming through this proxy server right here and this is being run by a semi-legitimate company. Well, if CNET knows they've been hacked and they know the attack came from this proxy server, they can go to the police, the police can get a warrant, and then using that warrant, they can go to the people who run this proxy server, they can literally take the entire proxy server physically out of the building, and then they can dissect that thing to come up with the log files that shows that you were coming from your house up to here to go to CNET. Now, if you really really get all black hat and stuff, you can bounce these signals through all kinds of botnets and, and God knows what, and then the police won't be able to find you. But if you really irritate the NSA or the CIA or the cyber ninjas, <laughs> they can still track you down because the information is still out there. Again, it goes back to how much time, energy, money, resources do the security people really want, want to take and tracking back to you. So like I say with this whole anonymous thing, uh, you know, they just arrested quite a few people. The reason is, is because anonymous really did start to piss off big people. You know, it's, you know, once you start, start irritating the NSA and the CIA and all that such, you know, they really can come back and they really can do a lot of things. Um, that they, they don't put into the movies. So one of the warnings that I'll give you is they can always track back to the original location. So if, if they have the money, they can always track back to the, the original location. So, so normal people, normal website administrators, they'll get stumped on these proxy servers and they'll stop. If you go after real law enforcement, 
where real law enforcement really gets involved, they'll always be able to come back to the origin. They'll be able to figure out where you were attacking from. So that's why a lot of the hackers will then use all these proxy settings and all of that and then go to their local cafe. Or more importantly, or, 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 or more aptly, they'll go to the local cafe that happens to be two states away that they've never been to in their entire life. They will then do whatever they're doing. They will pay for it in you know, their, their coffee and cash, and then they will leave. The reason is, is because if they're in this cafe, if their house is here, they drive to the cafe. In the cafe, they then use a proxy server to attack. Well then, they go back to the proxy server, then they can figure out that it happened in the cafe, but then you don't live in the cafe, you drove to the cafe. And since you paid with cash, because cash can't be tracked, well then you leave the cafe and go home, and it's less likely that somebody will be able to, to track you down. But the big thing with this is remember, at the end of the day, somebody, these little cyber ninjas out there, will be able to track back to where the attack began from. The other thing I will warn you is, is you know, this whole theory of honor among thieves. Um, <clears throat> yeah, hackers don't really have that. Um, hackers are a very Darwinian lot. Uh, like it or leave it. Uh, basically, if, if you're weak, you should get hacked type of thing. So if you decide to use these proxy servers, remember, these proxy servers may be set up and run by hackers who are creating very detailed logs of everything you are doing. So if you connect to a proxy server and then you go to your Gmail account and then you log into your Gmail account with your username and password, the chances are this hacker just logged that information and then they will hack your Gmail account. If you do this to log into anything else, they will grab that information and then they can hack into whatever account uh, that you gave them. The reason is, is because in the hacker ethos, you were stupid. And stupid people should get smacked with a very, very, very big stick. I'm not saying it's right. I am saying it's how these people operate. So be very careful when you're using these proxy servers. A lot of these proxy servers are set up by hackers. And, and like it or not, if you end up sending valuable information over the internet connection, well... You just may get beat by other bit very big stick. The other thing that I will warn you with these proxy servers is again, remember I come from a bit of the security, military, blah, blah, blah world. Now I know if it was me, and I know right now in 2012, um, governments and law enforcement and all, and all that are having a hell of a time with hackers and online piracy, etc., etc., etc. So I know what I would do if I controlled a law enforcement or an intelligence agency budget, what I would do is, is I would come up with the best system of proxy servers the world has ever known. I'd come up with proxy servers that had a gig upload and download speed connected to them. Um, as you may have heard about NSA, CIA, uh, they help fund real companies, real profitable companies. So if I had their money, I would fund a real company that would have proxy servers. And I would make sure every script kitty, every, every kitty porn nut in the world would know about these proxy servers and would know they are the absolute best proxy servers in the world. And then for a year, I would make sure my proxy servers had the best log file system that's ever been created. And then I would shut down that entire proxy network and then I would just arrest hundreds of thousands of people overnight. That's what I would do if I was in law enforcement or security. So that is my warning. One way or another, whenever you're using these proxy servers, is be careful. You do not know who controls these proxy servers. Don't believe there's honor among thieves. Um, remember, hackers are Darwinian critters. So, uh, so if you connect to one of these proxy servers, remember any communication through that proxy server can be logged, most likely is logged whether it's being logged by hackers or it's being logged by law enforcement, who knows, but, 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 but be, uh, be very, very, uh, <coughs> very careful with that. So this is Web Proxy Servers for Hacking. Uh, as you know, I'm, uh, I'm Eli the Computer Guy, over here for elithecomputerguy.com and everymanit.com. Again, as with all these hacking classes, I've used these Web Proxy Servers very legitimately for very normal things. 
and you can use them for hacking. I'm just teaching you, they're here, they exist. If you're going to play with it, again, just be careful. All these hacking classes, this is the real world. As soon as you start routing your traffic through other people's systems, you are, you're just, you're just food. You are, you are food for the sharks. So, uh, so just, uh, just uh, be, be very careful. So, uh, so with that, as always, I look forward to, te or as always, I look, I look, uh, ba ba ba. As always, I enjoy teaching this class, and I look forward to uh, teaching you another one.